there's another way to flip a table on the side. I can do it here with the search case. I can do it with the decode. With I could do it with a simple case since I'm checking equality. Either one would have worked. But I also have a new functionality, which is the pivot functionality. How do we flip a table on the side with pivot? And then we have an unpivot that flips it back. Well, let's talk about the general functionality first. Okay, the general functionality says, all right, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate rows into columns with a pivot. So my rows, I'm going to take a certain column in my normal data and take the data in those rows and rotate that data into columns. And I am going to run an aggregate function on some of the columns. So some of the columns I can flip up, but other columns I'm going to run aggregate functions on. The unpivot does the reverse. The unpivot says, okay, I've got columns that I'm going to fold down and make them data in a column down, but going down in rows, and I'm going to display pre-aggregated data, data that I've already have aggregated, but when I unpivot, it's going to flip columns into row data. And all of these things we're talking about have been useful for a lot of things in particular, useful for seeing trends in data. So that, well, that's one of the things it's really good at. Okay, so let's look at the syntax now. Here's the syntax for our pivot. The syntax, I will say, takes a little getting used to, but when you, once you get used to it, it, it's pretty standard, and it's much clearer as to what you're doing. You know, if you're going to go do this, it's kind of not quick clear, and you're not telling Oracle exactly what you want to do. You tell, you're coming up with a little algorithm so you can fool Oracle and say, hey, Oracle, this is what I really want to get. I want to get pivots, and you're telling it how to go do it. It's always better if there's a command in Oracle that you're telling Oracle exactly what it is you want to do. I want to pivot the data. Why is that better? Because Oracle knows exactly what you want to do, and it internally can come up with the best algorithm to do that. So one would suspect that there, would, there are things in the pivot command that would be more efficient than if you did a, 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 a pivot with a case expression. And there are, and there are cer certain, certain times, sometimes, you know, depending on how much you pivot, it doesn't matter too much, but pivoting a lot of data causes you to do multiple case statements on each row, and that can take a lot of CPU time. Whereas, typically, this pivot syntax is going to be somewhat more efficient. So whenever you can do anything in Oracle by telling it exactly what you want, then and analytic functions is another example of that. Other, analytic functions tells it exactly what you want. You want running totals, you want ranking or whatever. You're always much more efficient using that than coming up with your own algorithm on how to do it. So let's look at the syntax. You say select star from and now you have an inner query. So I'm going to do a select star from and I'm going to do a query within my from clause. And what is that inner query? The inner query is going to contain all the columns that you need that you're using in this query, whether it's in the pivot command, whether it's in the pivot columns, or whether you just want to display other columns along with that data. So you specify every column in your inner query. Just do a select on your table with all the columns you're going to need. Then you have a pivot command. And within the pivot command, here's your open paren, here's your close paren at the end. Within the pivot command, you're going to have one or more aggregate functions. What are they going to do? The aggregate functions are going to say, hey, which columns do I want to do aggregates on? Sums, counts, mins, max, whatever it is, average. Which, co which columns do I want to do fu aggregate functions on, and what aggregate functions do I want to perform on them? So what do I want to get in my result set? Sum of this, average of that, and so on. Well, that tells me which aggregates I want. But now I have to also tell it which columns I'm going to pivot. So I have to specify one or more columns in my pivot list. And then I have one more thing. So the pivot columns is which columns from the inner query are you going to do pivoting on. And now which values are you going to pivot? That's your in clause. That's your list of values. These are the values you want pivoted. You don't necessarily pivot all values you're only going to pivot potentially some values. Why is that useful? Because you may not want to see 
all of these values. That may not be important to you. You may only want to pivot some of the values. So for instance, in the prior example, where we did here, we only pivoted cash, visa, gold, visa, standard, and discover. Maybe there were others we didn't want to pivot. Maybe you want to pivot things like uh, uh, how, how many days late the, the, the balance is. You don't care if it's, uh, uh, you want to pivot, let's say, anything more than 30 days late. So you go over 30, 30 to 60, 60 to 90, 90 to 120 or whatever. You can pivot whichever ones you want. And that is going to be in your list of values clause here. Now notice something very, very interesting. Notice we are asking for aggregate functions, but we don't have any group by here at all. There is no group by. And that's because the pivot command knows which aggregate functions you're asking for, knows that which columns you're pivoting, and it says, okay, if I'm pivoting the columns and I'm asking in my inner query for some other columns, any column that doesn't have an aggregate function, I'm going to do my group by on. I have to group by it by all the other columns without aggregate functions. That's my golden group by rule. So Oracle knows that, and since it knows which columns you're doing aggregates on, the pivot command automatically groups all the non-aggregate functions. So the actual syntax for the pivot command is pretty cool because you don't have to do your own group by, Oracle will do that for you, and you're telling it exactly what you want to do the pivot so Oracle can be more efficient, and anyone reading it knows what you're doing. They know you're doing a pivot, they know which columns you're doing it on, they know which values. So that's really where the syntax, it's worth learning the syntax, it's not that difficult, it, it's a little different than what we've seen before, but once you get it, then it's much easier to read the code afterwards. So let's look at an example. Here I'm selecting star from, and here's my select, I'm going to need the Custno, payment method, and total order price. Why do I need three? because I'm going to sum, my aggregate is going to be on the total order price, and I'm going to pivot the payment method for payment method in, and I'm going to say which values for payment method in, and here's my list of values. And Oracle knows automatically, since I'm doing a sum of total order price, to actually do a group by the Custno and the payment method. So it gives me these totals here. I get one row for each customer number. Normally, if you group by custom and payment method, you get a column for custom and a column for payment method, but we flipped the column for payment method. We have pivoted that column, so therefore you don't see that in the list going down. You see that going across, but these are your aggregate function, your aggregate values. So it's pretty neat. It's a very nice capability. Okay, well knowing I can do that, that I can pivot like that, this is fine, but notice what it does. For my column aliases, it actually gives me the actual data values with the quotes on them and so on. Well, that's not so great. I'm not happy with that. So therefore, of course, whoops, of course you can do column aliases. I'm adding column aliases with the pivot. CA as cash, VG as Visa Gold, no problem, you can have column aliases, so that's an easy one to resolve. I added my column aliases. But now, perhaps, notice I sung my total order price. Maybe I want more aggregate functions than that. I want multiple aggregate functions. How can you do that? No problem. In my pivot, I say, sum of total order price, and I'm giving a column alias as total, we'll see why in a minute, and average of total order price as average. And I didn't have to do just sum total order price and, and average total order price, I could have done other columns that I summed and aggregated and averaged and whatever, it doesn't matter. I'm doing the same thing here for payment method in with my same aliases, and now you'll see why I have a column alias total and average, because now I have cash underscore total, cash average, visa gold total, visa gold average. So now you can get both the sum and the average, and the, which, which one you're in is indicated here uh, by the combination of this column alias and this column alias. Now, by the way, if you didn't have a column alias here, as total and as average, you'd get an error. 
you get a syntax error on this because Oracle needs separate column names for each of those and it needs to tell you which it is and it would give you an error. And on the previous page, I could have said for sum of total order price as total or as total order price or whatever I wanted. If I had done that, it would have said uh, total cash, total Visa Gold and so on. It would have said that. I didn't need it here because there's only one aggregate function. But when you have multiple aggregate functions, then you need it here. You need this column alias. So we added column aliases. We did multiple aggregate functions. We aggregated on, on uh, we did a sum and an average. And that's great. But now what if we want to pivot on multiple columns, which is a little different. Now we're going to pivot on multiple columns. Before I had multiple aggregate functions. Here I'm just doing one sum, but I could have done a sum and an average and whatever else I wanted. I could have had multiple aggregates. But now I'm going to pivot on two columns, the payment method, order date, and order date. And what I'm going to do in my list is I have to give all payment method order date combinations that I want. So now I say for payment method order date in cash February 14th, these are standard February 14th. And notice all I'm going to get is those values. All the rest of the values will be null. And I have a nice, I, I can name them properly. The cash for February 14th is Valentine Day cash. The visa standard for February 14th is Valentine Day visa standard. So I can pivot on multiple columns as well as doing aggregates on multiple columns.